and welcome. Um, Gail is on her way, so I'm going to start us off and kick us off this morning, and Gail will uh, catch up where, and probably correct everything I get wrong. Um, coming up for the church, I know next Sunday, after worship, the elders will meet right down here for a brief meeting. Uh, also coming up, uh, before we know it, Ash Wednesday will be here, the beginning of Lent. And we have a couple of things that evening. We have uh, the uh, supper, which will start at 6, and then we have the service, which will start at 7. So uh, we certainly will have a busy evening as we begin the season of Lent, and we invite you and anyone who would like to come and join us to join us for that supper and that service. Uh, if you know you're coming, you might let Kim know in the office just simply because we're trying to get numbers for the amount of food that we need. So that would be helpful to us. Um, and I'm not sure how soon we're tag teaming this, but uh, you want to take over now or later? I don't care. Good morning. Sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. <laughs> I did get here though, that's good. And thank you, Barry, for starting things off. Um, let's see. Are there any blessings to announce that anyone has? <laughs> Our acolytes are getting lined up, that's good. Okay. Yes. A lot of blessings. Okay. AJ is out of the hospital. He's recovering from surgery. What's that? Back surgery. Back surgery. He has been really hurt badly, and he has been in a lot of pain for weeks now, but he is getting better. That's wonderful. Okay. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to worship the Lord.
Please stand and join us for our opening hymn, number 277, Christians We Have Met to Worship. <clears throat> It's time for the invocation and followed by the Lord's Prayer. Please join me in prayer. Almighty and loving God, we are in awe of your magnificent power displayed through the entire universe. For through you, all things were made and all things have their being. We come before you this morning to worship you with grateful hearts and thanksgiving. We long to adore you and worship you only. Lord, may we know the presence of the Holy Spirit here with us today. May we be open to your calling, sensitive to your speaking, and alert to your leading. Lord, we declare that you are welcome here among us. Let us now pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our young if our young disciples would please come forward Well, did anything exciting happen in the last few days? Well, come here. My baby brother is here. Okay, congratulations. And his name is? Mateo. Mateo. Wonderful name. Wonderful. Congratulations. Big old hug. Good. <laughs> I like your shoes. Can you hold your foot up real high so they can see your shoes on TV? <laughs> Those are cool. Okay, you guys. Well, that's a, that's a wonderful way to start. Um, have you ever been with someone you're going to have a conversation with, kind of like Luis, <laughs> and they keep talking, and you have something to say, and they keep talking and talking talking and talking yeah have you Madison you know anyone like that have you ever been with someone and you're in a conversation and you want to say something but they keep talking and talking and talking sometimes okay well prayer is like a conversation all right and the conversation is between you and God and for whatever reason we have forgotten the fact that it is a conversation and whenever we pray it's always about us talking right talking and talking and talking and do you think God may be frustrated as well because we don't listen we just keep talking and asking and demanding and all that because prayer is our communicating with God, but it's also about us listening to God. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights praying, do you think he talked constantly for 40 days and 40 nights? No. It's a conversation he had with God. He was seeking God's direction and empowerment. And one thing that I really encourage you guys to do when you pray is you speak to God and then you listen, okay? When you wake up in the morning, God's created us in such a way, and I'm not sure if it's your age group, but for when we get older, when we wake up in the morning, the, some of the first things that come to mind are a to-do list. You know, we wake up and we start thinking about things that we need to get done. That's how God created us. And it could be homework, it could be a chore, it could be something that you really need to be doing. And then you listen and those thoughts come to your mind. You know, could that be God talking to you? I think it might be. Also, when you uh, are in a difficult situation some bad things have happened and then sometimes thoughts come to your heart and mind about things you should do and that is also God you know thing is <clears throat> sometimes we do all this talking that we don't listen to God and so when you do your prayer time especially here in worship you s you become silent and you listen because scripture says there's a still small voice a whisper in your heart and that's God okay so prayer is about talking but it's also about listening and uh, that is one of the greatest gifts that's prayer it's a conversation with God okay all right well let's pray gracious God open our hearts open our ears Open our minds to your leading, to be with these wonderful young people. And we're so thankful for Mateo and the love he's going to receive. Amen.
Our first concerns this morning, we have two, three actually, that I would like for you to focus on today. Um, Sarah West, also A.J. Stambaugh, and then Marsha. Is, um, she's awaiting the, the doctor's um, conclusions about what the next step is going to be um, with her procedure. Also, just received word this morning that Melvin's brother, Keith Hawking, is in Evansville at one of the hospitals there, and he is uh, in serious condition. So please remember Melvin's brother, Keith Hawking, in your prayers this week. Let us place these concerns before Christ at his table. And let us prepare our hearts for a time of prayer with the singing of our prayer hymn. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the spring of life, and our thirsting spirits come each week to drink deep of your living water. And many of us have come celebrating all with lighthearted laughter, yet others of us bring bogged down spirits that have limited our capacity for gratitude. But we all come to you believing that you are the source of renewing hope. And it's in this sacred space we turn hoping to hear your voice speaking deep into our souls. We have spent far too much time wandering, disoriented, and unsure of our purpose in this world. And there is deep within us the desire to live with purpose and passion. In prayer, we gather up our concerns, our own stumbling blocks, our worries over loved ones, our burdens over our world and its challenges. Help us to discern that which we are powerless to change, but also give us the boldness to risk changing the things that we can change. 
Help us to pay attention to the attitudes that may keep us from you and from others. Our stubborn pride, our crippling fears, our cynical thoughts. Help us to turn to you, trusting that you will help us through our soul sickness to a new hope for a deeper life with you. And then grant us spirits that seek to serve in your world, that we might make you glad today, and guide us that we might venture into our world with courage in the journey you have entrusted us with. O oh God, now we have a moment of silence that you might speak to our hearts. give you thanks for these gifts. In your son's name we pray. Amen. For our stewardship moment today, I will share some brief readings from a book I've been reading entitled Abide. This book was authored by Jen Wilkin, an author and Bible teacher from Dallas, Texas. She lists some of God's marvelous attributes. First, God is generous. God gives what is best and beyond what is deserved. Second, God is a provider. He meets the needs of his children. And third, God is merciful. God does not give his children the punishment they deserve. Keeping these attributes of God in mind, we should always praise God for his blessings with our good acts of stewardship. Freely you have received, freely give.
please join me in prayer. O Lord, giver of life and source of freedom, we know that all we have is received from your hand. Gracious and loving God, you call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us to always use your gifts wisely by sharing them for your purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is found in Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her. And she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning... While it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there Jesus prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns 
so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went out throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Prayer. Prayer is the single most important act that you and I, anyone who seeks God, we need to do. We can't know the will of God for our lives unless we pray. We can't be strong in the face of temptation unless we pray. We can't be the people of God unless we pray. We can't be healthy spiritually unless we pray. We can't get our faith right until we get prayer right. Jesus knew this, and Jesus understood the importance of prayer and the difference it makes. Why? It seems like Jesus prayed all the time. You see, in the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, we find that Jesus woke up early in the morning to pray. He sneaked away to a quiet place so that he could pray. In fact, the Gospel of Luke, we find 15 different references to Jesus praying. It says he prayed as he began his ministry. He prayed to renew himself. He prayed before he chose his disciples. He prayed as he evaluated his ministry. He prayed as he served and healed people. He prayed as he faced his crucifixion. He prayed on the cross, and he prayed after he was resurrected. Jesus was always praying. If Jesus thought it was important enough to pray, don't you think it's important for us to pray? In Luke 11, we notice the disciples picked up on Jesus' habit of praying. They saw him praying all the time. And they thought that they could learn something from his practice. So one time when Jesus was praying in a certain place, Luke tells us, the disciples approached him and asked, Jesus, that prayer thing you are always doing, can you teach us to do it also? Jesus agreed, and he began to teach them. And he gave them an outline of a prayer to learn, the Lord's Prayer that we recite every Sunday. It's an outline of topics and themes that we need to pray about. And after that, he taught them about the importance of prayer. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the importance of persistence in prayer. In Luke chapter 11. And Jesus underscored that the key to effect prayer is to pray habitually and persistently. For prayer to make a difference, a real difference, it must become a habit. Many of us forget this simple truth. We pray for something once and we're disappointed and Nothing changes. Perhaps we think, well, God sure didn't listen to me, did he? My friends, God hears us the first time. But prayer is much deeper than that. Jesus basically tells them that God always, always answers our prayers. Whenever we ask, God will answer. Whenever we search, we will find. Whenever we knock, God will open. Jesus says this is true for everyone. Everyone who seeks God persistently in prayer will receive an answer. That's a spiritual law. God answers prayer. The power of God through prayer is available to everyone. But as we learned in Sunday school, 
God doesn't always answer with yes, does he? But he does answer the prayer. You see, what Jesus says in this text, Jesus did not say everyone who asks receives the answer they want, finds what they are looking for, or has the door that they wanted open to open. God, God always answers us. But sometimes we sure don't like the answer that we get. We want from God what we want. And what we receive from God are two different matters. God loves us too much to always give us what we want. Because sometimes what we want is not good for us or what is best for us or for God's world. But God will always answer us. God clearly states that there is something that we can always count on to receive from God when we pray. And Jesus says that whenever we seek God in prayer, God always gives us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? To love us, mold us, shape us, guide us, empower us, and direct us. This means that prayer is not putting our order in to God. It's not rubbing a magic lamp or giving Santa Claus a wish list. Prayer is not getting our phrasing right so that we can unlock the God machine like the pagans and other personal God religions that seek magic. Prayer is the one essential practice that brings us closer to God and allows us to be formed by his love. Prayer is not about getting from God. Prayer is intimacy with God. Prayer is developing a meaningful relationship with God. And that's why it must be a habit. Prayer is not meant to persuade God. It's meant to change us. Prayer does not give us what we want from God. Prayer helps us want what we need from God. And what we need from God is to get our hearts right. What we need is to get our souls right. What we need is to get our relationships right. And this can only happen through a a relationship with God in prayer. You know, the truth is that most of the time we don't want a relationship. We are wanting a road map. We pray, okay, God, I don't need much of your time. You don't need to get too involved in my life. Just give me some direction here. What should I do? And God replies, well, why don't you hang out with me for a while? Let's spend some quality time together. I want to show you some things. But we persist. Lord, really, I just want, I just don't need that much of you. Just give me a yes or no. And God replies, just abide in me and my love from day to day, and you will find what you're looking for. Hmm. God still wants us to bring to him our needs, our desires, our questions, our doubts. God loves us and wants us to give him all that we are, but the answer to our questions, needs, and desires come as we develop an intimate relationship with God through prayer. And when we develop intimacy with God through prayer, we find that abiding in his love and being the people he wants us to be is where true life truly is. The more we experience true life, the more we want to please God. And the more we want to please God, the easier it is for us to change. And the easier it is for us to change, 
the sooner we are able to pray, Lord, I want to fit into your plans. Like Jesus said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you want God to move like a tidal wave in your life? Do you want God to make a huge impact in your life? Then be prepared to pray. Lord, whatever you want, that's what I want as well. When you are ready to surrender like that in prayer, I guarantee life will get exciting and becomes more and more interesting than you will ever imagine. You see, we must move from Lord, this is how I want things to work out in my life to, Lord, I want what you want for my life. If you desire a personal conversation with God through prayer today, I have a a suggestion for you so that you might experience the difference that prayer can make in your life. For the next Seven days, and I hope that you go longer than seven days. I want you to start your day with prayer. First thing you do when you wake up, you start thinking about bills to be paid or people to see and all that stuff. I encourage you to pray. It doesn't have to be a a long time. Just lay in that bed for five to ten minutes. And when you find that you are quiet on the inside, then pray. Pray these phrases. Lord, I want to get to know you better. I want to know your love. I want a relationship, a real relationship with you. And then share with God what is burdening your mind and heart. Don't hold back. Share it with God. God's listening. And God wants to hear from you. But be sure to include not only your own needs, but the needs of others. And before you end your prayer time, pray, Lord, I want to please you. I want to do your will today. Whatever it is that you want, that's what I want to. I want to fit into your plans. Show me the way. And I guarantee it'll lead to some exciting things in your life. You see, Jesus knew the power of submitting to God's will. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying so intensely that drops of blood flowed from his forehead? But he said, not my will, but your will be done. He's our example. It was at that moment when Jesus said this prayer that everything changed. Not my will, but your will be done. He had been praying this prayer his whole life in ministry. He had developed such a love and trust for God that when it came to that moment of truth, he was prepared and able to surrender to God's will. And guess what? As a result, the world was changed. The universe was changed. I assert that what empowered Jesus to do what God had sent him to do in the world was his consistent prayer life throughout his entire life. I just want you to imagine how close you could feel to God if you prayed more. Imagine what God could show you if you prayed more. Just imagine what God could do through you If you prayed more, imagine the strength and wisdom you could have if you prayed more. Imagine the opportunities from God that would open up for you 
if you prayed more. Imagine the person you could become if you prayed more. Imagine the relationships that could be healed and restored if we prayed more. Imagine the impact our church would have if all our members developed a habit of prayer. Imagine the lives you could touch for Christ if you prayed more. I would like for you to repeat after me this prayer. Lord, I want to know you better. I want to know your love. And I want a relationship with you. Lord, I want to please you. I want to do your will. Whatever it is you want, that's what I want to. I want to fit into your plans. So show me the way. As we gather around the Lord's table today, may you listen to the Spirit of God speaking to your hearts. Let us join in the singing of our hymn of dedication.
Are you ready to go to the Lord's table and hear God's voice? Not only that he loves you, but he has some great plans for you. Let us go to the Lord's table and embrace Christ and know once again how much we are loved. Come this day to the Lord's table where Christ has invited us to share this meal of grace. Christ recognizes you and I and looks upon us with favor. Christ befriends us and wants us within his circle. May we take this bread and cup which is blessed this day and count ourselves among God's and Christ's disciples by partaking in this feast of fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Brothers and sisters, let us remember that on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took the loaf, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And then he took the Passover's cup of blessing, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, my blood shed for the sins of the world. Take and drink. Gracious God, we have remembered the tremendous love you've had for us and the faithfulness of your son Christ Jesus that he was willing to die for the sins of the world. O oh God, may we reflect on the meaning of that for us because it was not just for us, but it was for the world. And that's why the last words Jesus said to his disciples, he said, go into all the world and make disciples. May we be faithful. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he told those who were faithfully following, you are the light to the world. May this symbolism that you see now be made real in your life as you leave this place. You are the light of Christ in the world. Mm -hmm.